This will be my mom's personal ring upgrade. I'm moving it to a mid-size ATX thermal tape case, which cost me about $30. I will link that in the description. It has a mini TX2 in it, which has gone up in price, so I wouldn't suggest buying that unless you have the money. As you can see, cable management is very poor. Uh, got a little solid state drive in here, which is mounted nowhere. I do not suggest doing that. Uh, it's a socket 775 using Intel Core 2 Duo E8400 with a 512 megabyte video card from ASUS. I plan on switching that out with an EVGA GTX GeForce 210 1GB video card. This will be the new case. Like I said, it's a thermal take. A lot of it is a toolless design. Bands even snap in. It has... Oh, really quick to use. Little trays for solid state drives and normal size hard drives, which are 3.5s. <clears throat> it came with fan bolted into the back, but I moved it to the front. This would be the new video card I'm putting in my mom's gaming rig. Not gaming rig, but her personal rig. Hmm. We'll be installing a Hyper 212 Evo into it. And I will keep y'all updated. As you can see, I'm about halfway done. This was a Solitech 600 watt power supply. It has a switch in the back. Bottom of the case came with a. See it better. Came with a dust filter, which I'm thankful for considering how dusty it normally gets. I already got the solid state drive installed and the hard drive. That is a, I believe, 250 gig hard drive. Oof. Yeah, 250 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda. Like I said, it's all toolless design. Pull out of spare. As you can see, it's got little anybody stoppers on it, so that your hard drive can put in. I'll have doubled up on screws for safety. By the way, this is also a Versa H21 Thermaltake case, the one without the window. Costs about $30 to $40. Once again, I'll put a link in the description. It has a total of 6 gigabytes of memory in it. That is the new video card that is installed. That is an EVGA GeForce 210 video card with passive cooling. The solid state drive is a silicone power... 120 gigabyte SATA 3 S55 hard drive. Worked just as good as any name brand. At least in my opinion, because that's what I'm running in my gaming ring. Run two of those with, uh, one's a 120, one's a 240, which I plan on upgrading. Case is also pretty good for cable management, as you can see in the back. Uh,. Almost didn't fit the Hyper 212 Evo in there. I had to pull the motherboard back out, install the back plate, and install the heat sink before I put it all back together. As you can see, I ran the cable very tightly for the 4 pin CPU connector. No more duct tape, yay! I will be using. Oh, one fell out. Oof. I will be using two orange SATA cables. I'm waiting on the third before I hook up the hard drive itself. The front pan panel, the sorry about that. The front panel fans will be powered by two of these. This way, they run at full RPM. I had tried to install the Hyper 212 Evo the other way, 90 degrees that way, but unfortunately, it got in the way of that little heat sink. 
No, I'm not removing that again. I already had to replace thermal paste on it once. Don't feel like doing it again. Which I know is not smart. As you can see, the case also comes with a front panel audio jack setup with one front USB port. It also has a ouch front USB 3.0 port. However, this board does not support it. I have ordered a USB 3.0 PCI card for it. Yes, PCI the little white slots. And that is so far how long far long I've gotten. I will continue to keep you all posted. It is finally complete. Sorry about the poor camera angle I'm using my phone as I don't have an actual camera. It is perfectly wired up. You look in there you can see where all of the wires perfectly ran, no clutter, except for down here. Yes, I know 600 watt power supply is massive overkill for this computer, but it's all I had. Oh. See the cable management in the back using zip ties. Never have enough of those laying around. Oh. If you look here, you can see that there is room for a water cooling kit. Which I may go with the Corsair H60 water cooling closed loop kit. Oh. Oh.